Okay, welcome back. This is problem two from quiz one during the spring 23 semester at Cal State Fullerton. This is Math 302. And in this problem, uh, let's see, we're given a set U and two subsets, S and T. And we want to prove that, oh my goodness, this is complicated. Okay, let's see. We're taking the intersection of T with the complement of the intersection of S and T. And we want to show that this intersection is empty. No, no. If this intersection is empty, ah, then T is a subset of S. Okay. Uh, well, let's see here. Let's write down our hypotheses, all right? So the hypothesis is that if I intersect S and T and then look at the complement, and then I intersect that with T, I get the empty set. And my conclusion is that T is a subset of S. Okay, so I want to show that T is a subset of S. Now, what does that mean? That means that if I choose any element of T, it will be an element of S. Okay, so let's write that above. So uh, if T is in T, then T is in S. Okay, um, well, I mean, this means I'm going to have to start with some element of T, right? So let's do this over here. Let's let T be in T. Now, what do I know? I have these hypotheses up here, and this tells me something about elements of T, right? Namely, elements of T ha are not elements of the complement of S intersect T. Okay, so if T is in T... then T cannot be in this complement. Then T is not in the complement of S intersect T. Okay, because there's nothing in the intersection. There's nothing which is both in T and in this complement. So if you're in T, then you're not in the complement. Okay, so let T be in T since S intersect T complement, intersect T is empty. We conclude that T is not in S intersect T complement. Ah, now what does it mean if you are not in the complement of a set? All right? Well, if you have this big set U and I have a subset S intersect T, then the complement is all the other stuff. So if I'm not in the other stuff, right, the complement, then I must be in the, the left-hand side here, in the intersection. Thus, T is an element of S intersect T. Oh, but if I'm in S intersect T, then that means I'm in both S and I'm in T. In particular, I'm in S. So, and hence, T is in S. Hey, that's what I wanted to prove. I wanted to prove that if T was in T, then T was an element of S, right? Because these were equivalent to each other. And there we go. <laughs> we did it. How neat. Well, since we finished that one so quickly, uh, well, why don't we do a second proof of this, huh? How about that? All right, so this was proof one. Here would be proof two. Now, I don't recommend proof two, but I think some people are going to try this approach first, right? I think just going right to the definition, what do things mean is, is better here. But l l let's let's see what happens if you try, let's call it a more algebraic approach. So let's start from the assumption. We know that the empty set is equal to the complement of the intersection of S and T intersected with T. Now, there's a rule about how you take the complement of an intersection. This is equal to the union of the complements. Okay, but now I have the intersection distributing over a union, right? This is called De Morgan's Law. And so I can write this as the intersection of the complement of S with T union the intersection of the complement of T with, C, with T. Ah, but T and its complement have no intersection. That's what the complements all the stuff not in T, right? So this piece here is just equal to the empty set. 
Now I'm taking a union with an empty set. Well, the empty set doesn't give you anything new. So this is just the intersection of T with S complement. So we conclude that if you intersect the complement of S with T, we get the empty set. All right, that's where we started this whole thing, was with the empty set. Now, I want to show that T is a subset of S, which we know means that every element of T is an element of S. Well, if T is in T, then, well, what does this tell you? If you're in T, you cannot be an S complement because there is no intersection. Then T is not an element of S complement. But if you're not an S complement, you must be an S. And so T is an S. Sweet. That proves that T is a subset of S. So there's a second proof that we could do. Hey, try to find a third. Put it in the comments. We'll see you next time.